I'd like to call upon Sally's subconscious, please. Here, here. Thank you so much. Are you able to do a body scan and tell me what is happening to her body today? She's relaxed. She is feeling a little bit sore on her body because she ran, but made her happy. And so she feels good and released energy and it's we're working on it we feel it's actually starting to relax on the back now okay well that is good are you able to help uh, heal and balance anything in her body that needs to be healed and balanced as we do this session today? Mm -hmm. We could do that. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, subconscious, we were curious if there was um, an explanation you can share with us about her seeing the yellow lights in the sky. She walking early in the morning into the office building and we directed her to look up and there was long streaks of yellow light and there's many of them and she kept looking away and looking up she was never seen yellow streaks of light right above her it was uh, Christ consciousness. She had a session the day before connecting with Jesus, mentioning energy of his coming down onto the planet now. She saw that. And what was the significance for her to see Christ consciousness uh, energy? Ah, just the connection, um, the knowing, having the ability to see it and connecting in with that type of energy. Uh, it was just to remind her uh, how connected we truly are and how everything is happening and there's so much going on that if you just tried to tap in you'd probably start seeing <laughs> fantastic okay that is lovely um so thank you. And then she also was wondering why did she get the sense that the sun is getting her attention and trying to connect in with her quite a bit at the moment? She feels the sun reaching out to her. Um, almost like telling her oh, I almost want to say like goodbye it's almost like a farewell um, it's uh, it's like she knows it and she has a connection to the sun she loves the sun the warmth the just what it brings onto earth and she feels the consciousness of it 
Um, it's like they've spent many lifetimes together and it's like a farewell as like a friend. Um, it's, it's loving, um, but it's really getting her attention. tell us about the sun what is the significance to what we perceive being that ball in the sky I feel like there's <clears throat> consciousness it's like uh, alive like a soul inhabits the sun a being and it feels like it's aware of what's happening very aware it's gone through many changes also um, we almost, it's almost like they don't want us to know something about it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, you said to us that it's familiar with her. Um, what can you tell us about that how are they familiar with each other <laughs> um we think egyptian egyptian um the egyptian time It's like she's known this soul and was aware of it in the past, aware of the connection. Uh, we feel like she was more, though, the the deity, she had higher knowledge, was aware of the connection more. And it's almost like reminding her of this connection again, because she's reaching higher levels of awareness once again. Fascinating, thank you. And is there anything else you want to tell her about the sun today? I feel like it's like a father figure to her. I feel a fatherly figure behind it. Very loving. Beautiful. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that subconscious. I appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I was curious about. Um, if there were any significant past lifetimes you wanted us to know about um, something she's experienced that is significant to share in a public session. There are many. We do see um, 
little girl. Little girl. I want to say like braided, <clears throat> braided pigtails. Little girl. Light hair. Um, younger. Playing out. Seems like it's colder environment. See snow on the ground. And she's playing out in the snow. And looks like a more open scene with um, trees. And she's throwing the snow up and making it into little balls and throwing it around. Um, feel like she has a small house somewhere by there. Gonna try and look around. It's like there's some chimney smoke coming out. It's really cold. It's lots of snow. Um, we feel an older presence of someone by her, an adult. Like it's family. Hmm. I feel like she's very loved, very sim simple, simple life. Beautiful. Okay, and so then moving forward, what does that little girl do? <sighs> she, I guess she likes to just go about into the area, likes to play by herself. Um, I see her walking, it's daytime, there's snow. She has mittens and she's talking to herself and talking to like the trees. It's kind of just like babbling on like a little girl would. And we get a sense that she gets confused about like she was like looking down talking playing singing and then she looks up and then she's like confused she's like where am where am i and Everything looks the same. And she's looking around. All she sees is the snow and the trees. And she's it's like she got off path somehow and is now lost. Think she knows where to go, but she isn't quite sure back to her place. And there's snow, it's cold. And so she figures she'll just go back the way she came and just follow the tracks. And she 
Hmm. We aren't. She's following the tracks. There's smell coming down. She's getting cold. And we see her. This is the interesting thing. We we see her go find the house again. She gets back to the house and it's really cold and gets scolded by her parents. They're really upset with her because she's all wet. And they're mad because they're telling her that you don't do that, you don't go out and you don't say anything to anyone. And you don't just wander off. Now you're all cold and wet. Um, I feel like she's in bed. Not, not feeling good. Hmm. It's like the parents are around her and they're wondering why she's not feeling good. It's like she gets sick. Got fever. But they're putting like washcloths on her face. And she feels so dizzy. And like hot, really hot in the house. And I feel like she exits as a young girl. What was the life lessons and experiences and purpose of that lifetime? Uh, when she, so she was an explorer. She was a, um, just wanted to be free. And she felt guilty for coming back sick, getting sick, and um, breaking her parents' hearts because they're um, upset and devastated, and she died, and she thought it was her fault that they were upset. I see. And what does she want to learn from that lifetime? She wanted to understand what it felt like to, I guess you could say, make um, an error and how would she react when people she loved um, were upset by that error? And how, how bad it would affect her or if it would affect her. And she felt really guilty. And we see her actually Almost like took that guilt of feeling like she was the blame for all their pain and somehow took it with her. I see. Is this something she still needs to process and release? 
Yes. Okay. Are you able to help her release that now that she knows this event took place? <sighs> you release it now. Fantastic. How will she feel after noticing that she has fully released that? Better. Um, she's getting better at not feeling bad about others being reactionary towards her. So if she ever does anything that might hurt someone or they might, you know, think of something, she'll automatically blame herself for it without really knowing why. She doesn't want to cause any problems, but <sighs> this is good to release because she still had some of that. Well, that is really great. She was noticing already that she was becoming less concerned with people's reactions to her. Yes. She's noticing for the, the, well, the first time in this lifetime that she's becoming detached from how others are around her or towards her and receiving more inner peace, which empowers her and makes her feel much more strong emotionally. And it's, it's such an amazing feeling for her. She loves it. And it's just getting more and more obvious. Wonderful. And what is that getting her prepared for? She's going to have to stand strong in um, compassion and her own inner power and inner peace to help those around her who are going to need someone who is solid and able to calm them and be um, a peaceful strength when things start falling up, uh, collapsing around, when their lives start collapsing around them, she is going to make them feel so much more um, stable. And so this is what we would term her experiencing and being of service on what we term the old earth? Yes. She will be there. Yes. Hoping. She was wanting to know if she was, if she shifted at the end of the old earth experience or somewhere in the middle. What can you tell her? <laughs> she has this very strong intuition. It'll be at the end with her father. Um, they're very good together. They are very, he's a problem solver, solutions. She's compassionate and um, they're, they are very, um, very kind and they are very, they work well together. So they're going to help many. And the energy that they have is very, um, very, very uh, high and non judgmental. And it's going to be needed. There's going to be many, and they're all going to be needed at the end and throughout. Fantastic. Thank you. 
Um, she's curious to hear if the laser event is still needing to take place. <sighs> I don't mean to laugh. You don't. Um, yes, it's it's still gonna happen. We, she kind of, we laugh because she's asking us all the time. <laughs> and we understand why. Yes, it's still gonna happen. And we apologize for laughing. <laughs> you're not laughing at the laser event, you're laughing at us still uh, curious about if this is still necessary to awaken humanity in its final need. I don't know what else to say. Yes, it's not going to change. And it's, we kind of see it as, what if this happens? And we're like, no. <laughs> it'll still happen even if things change that will still happen I see and remind me why does the laser event still need to occur uh, it's because man needs to understand what man has done to itself and so this will never happen again to any other planet. Thank you. We understand that it's purposeful and has lessons that we need to learn from and grow from and remember. So I do appreciate you helping us. Um, would like to know if there is any information you'd like us to hear about any other events happening before the laser. We, uh, we are not wanting to discuss this right now. Um, we are we are giving her darkness. We are not telling her. Mm -hmm. Is there a significance of why you're not telling her? Mm. That is not needed to know right now, publicly. Mm -hmm. Okay. We shall not say it. That's fine. Thank you. And we understand that whatever has to happen um, is necessary, again, for purposes, experiences, exit points, and um, for many humanitarians and people to know and learn from and grow from. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much. I respect um, that it is um, not everything needs to be given to us information wise publicly. So I do respect that. And I appreciate all the information that you can share with us. We understand this is a privilege of information. And we do not want to misuse it or abuse it. Yes. And we love, we love all we love you all we love all that are listening and some things you just gotta live your life and have no worries and appreciate it all thank you we do understand that um i'm curious um, I haven't asked this recently, so I'd like to ask this um, now, um, just so people don't jump to conclusions. Um, I haven't asked 
um, if in this timeline or in our future timelines moving forward from now, if we will see an asteroid hit this planet, what do you have to say to us about that? We're seeing no, no asteroid. Mm -hmm. And so it always is popular culture in movies to represent an asteroid um, that can be impacting on this planet. What is the significance and lessons and information you would like us to understand about um, the information constantly being given to us about an asteroid impacting this planet? Us to prepare the population for uh, destruction of Earth. It's to put a seed of thought consciously into the mind. It's also depends on the person and still fear. Fear that fear of not having control over one's life course. Also, so we're seeing it impact different types of personalities, instilling fear in those who think they can control their life environment with their mindsets. And any kind of disruption doesn't make sense to them because they didn't, oh, they didn't think of it and they didn't want it, so then they think that that's not possible. And it's to awaken them, awaken those who are so rigid thinking that nothing can ever happen to their life. Nothing can ever change the reality. But things do happen. You have free will, yes, but we don't have complete control over situations. We don't have the power or the authority to, to change things that will be of a higher purpose. And it doesn't have to be an asteroid. It could be anything. It's... <laughs> It's changing people's mindsets differently, almost like shaking them awake to potentialities of a different um, not what they envisioned or what they wanted their perfect life to be like. What do you say to those people who claim if you watch a movie about an asteroid impacting the planet you will manifest that <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's not, we don't have that authority we don't we don't we can react to scenarios and change our reality in that way, reacting wise with our emotions. We cannot create things like that. It is not possible, not in this 3D reality. We don't have that much power. But subconscious, many people say that they create their own realities. Therefore, if they watch something like an asteroid and accept it, they do believe that they can manifest this if they choose. Um, I think we know something different, but how are we supposed to 
support these people who believe that they are the center of the universe. What happens sometimes is they go through different kinds of painful events in their life and they go into different spiritual um, philosophies and communities to find answers. What ends up happening is sometimes they're led to believe um, by many people who, who it's like they don't want to do harm, but they're they want things to be almost perfect, almost um, always always positive, always happy, and that's good. But they think that if you only focus on good things all the time, nothing bad will ever happen to you, and that's not true. That's, um, that's a very controlling personality that doesn't want to feel pain. They don't want to feel fear. They don't like it. It's an emotion that they need to face themselves. They'll feel so much more empowered. You do not feel empowered. Okay, thank you. Um, what about for those people who did have off-planet lifetimes where those planets were destroyed by asteroids? Could it be said that these people watching these movies that could awaken them to past lifetime traumas, when they heal from that and overcome that, is that also part of their own personal awakening and overcoming um, other lifetime events? <sighs> yes, we see that as going through the emotions of fear and what it feels like to be in that situation. We get a sense, those who have been impacted in previous planets have had dreams of such an event. And that's why they're so scared of the asteroid hitting earth because they th consider it they think it's happening in the future when it happened to them previously even though there's no such thing as time but previous to a 3d mind in the past and it is most healing releasing thank you i do understand um okay and um could it be confused with people left on the old earth when events do happen that they could assume that maybe the laser event could be an asteroid or something else that's not man-made but quite natural We get a sense that some will think it's from earthquakes. There's going to be much confusion because when the laser event, it's always confusing seeing this because it feels like it's all happening at the same time. We see the laser event, we see fires, we see earthquakes. And we feel like some, we don't know if it's based on geographical location, we get a sense it does. Those are in different parts of the planet 
we see more United States because it's impacted by this. Depending on where they're located at, groups will have different thoughts on it. You get a sense it could be from, some will think from earthquakes, some will think it's an attack and they don't know from what. Some will whisper aliens, There's been much confusion. Thank you. May we hope that they have clarity in those confusing times and for them to, to find solace in their own teams. Yes, we can help with that. We can send it out now. We see the people and it's like just a bunch of people and we're looking at their, it's like their subconscious. It's kind of like tapping them on the head, <laughs> helping them cope with clarity, opening them up for communication, more communication. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that information. Mm -hmm. um, we were curious about parallel lives. Um, what is the information you would like us to know about Sally and one of her parallel lives or how many other parallel lives does she have currently happening at this time? <sighs> Hmm. Ah, <sighs> see, an old woman, very old, possibly in the eighties, 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 eighty years old. Maybe. 80 years old, old lady. Um, something covering her head, like a dark scarf. And very quiet. Um, she's in a very deserty looking location. Um, Middle East, this is interesting, she, okay, that's interesting, yes, yes, um, she had a dream not long ago, two, three years ago, she was a woman in the Middle East. Her son was playing with his two friends. They were all little boys, about nine. 10 out, out of the house. Everything looks like tan colored buildings and everything. Kind of more like a rural poor area. And a blast came. Mother was outside. The boys flew. She ran to her son and held him in her arms and his back was blown open. He died in her arms. Hmm. 
<sighs> okay. And so is she, is this mother, is she still alive now? She is. Okay. Can we understand the significance of her having to experience the death of her son? to overcome I feel like heartache and to almost um, understand the power of inner peace Staying, staying, I want to say like, like I'm not broken. You don't think she's 80. She just looks um, tired. And um, hasn't, doesn't have much. Um, but does it need anything? <laughs> okay. Can we send her profound strength and love and clarity? that there is no such thing as permanent death. Is she able to connect in with her son and be able to know he is observing and probably supporting her from the other side? Yes. Um, she feels him. Right like on her shoulders a lot, like he's um, behind her and putting his arms on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. yes. I see. And because it's a parallel life that Sally is experiencing, that's why she got that profound dream of that experience. Because it's so traumatic, it would have impacted all versions of self. Is that correct? Yes, she dreamed it, and it was so tangible. Um, she felt all the emotion, and the mother just wanting to die, just crawl into a hole and die. It was very impactful and she always thought it was just a dream so it's very heartbreaking um in terms of the son um can we ask him if it was a life contract um his exit point Yes. Yes. Are we able to understand why you chose that exit point that's broken your mother's heart and all of us listening? Um, give us a bigger perspective, please, of of why you you had that exit point. He's smiling. He's like. Well, she's my mother in this life, but it's not real. 
It's like he thinks it's silly. The it's he's it's silly the amount of emotion and attachment humans have to one another. And he finds it humorous because he says we can have so many lifetimes with others. And when you exit <laughs> and you're no longer in this body and then you understand everything, you look at it like it was <laughs> the crying, the sadness, the pain, it's kind of silly. Like we take everything too seriously here. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we're glad that you are keeping your mother happy um, and letting her feel you. Um, um, but still, as we can respect your life contract and your choices and lessons, uh, what was the lesson that you learned in that lifetime being that little boy? Mm. He, he's, his mother's love. Um, He's almost like touched by how much she cared. And it was like when he was exiting in her arms, it all just rushed into his consciousness, how loved he really was. Um, in, terms, in terms of um, what actually occurred, uh, who was responsible for that bomb, even though you say it's a life contract? What was going on there? Um, United States. <sighs> States Americans were there. There was, they were trying to overrun the areas over there. There's fighting. We feel like that one, oh, we don't, we feel like that area was almost like it went, when they, it felt like it, the United States sent bombs, we don't know exactly what it was, it just exploded, but it went off with so much force. The area collapsed and the three boys went flying. We don't know why they did it. We don't understand that. Don't know if it was a uh, mist, mist, meant to hit something else, mist, and went there, there. It doesn't feel like it was supposed to hit there. For those Americans who were involved with this, and did they learn um, that this caused uh, little children to die? 
there they were they were aware of many casualties yes many and they were in so much fear fight or flight that they couldn't think they couldn't even think it's almost like they were just rushing around on adrenaline scared and there was it's like they were trying to block out any kind of emotion attachment to things in order to survive seeing what they were seeing day to day over there. Um, much death on both sides they were seeing. Much death in, for the Middle Easterns. And is this part of um, the emotions that they're having to deal with now, knowing what they were responsible for? Is this part of their own life karma to pay back and learn and overcome from? Um, how I know that every situation would be different, but out of curiosity for this little boy, those people responsible for the bomb, even though we understand and respect it's a life contract, what on their what on their part um, were they to learn from this experience? They would get a sense they were feeling like pawns on a chessboard. They were told what to do and they carry the orders out but they really didn't want to. It was like they were promised a certain type of career and yet what they caught was bloodshed, chaos, fighting. It didn't really, we feel most of them didn't want to be there, did not want to be there, did not want to do this. They were very emotionally distraught after uh, drinking, numbing, fearful, nightmares, seeing ghosts, ghosts around them. Mm, okay, thank you so much. Do you get a sense of the, the area um, or country that this little boy and this woman still lives? Afghanistan. I see. Thank you. And can she feel profound love and insight into the lessons and experience experiences that she chose to have this lifetime? I, I trust that she is seeing things from a bigger perspective the best she can, but I just want to make sure that she is feeling more loved and can understand um, the significance of the lesson she needed and wanted. Mm -hmm. Yes, we see her. We see an energetic hug coming from her teams around her, wrapping around her. Yes, we'll send all of that. It's a little bit emotional. I think every mother can feel um, <laughs> feel the intensity of it um, and still can't even imagine living through that. So, um, and we know that this mother is not the only mother to ever experience a loss of a child like this. Um, 
so we appreciate this insight and in terms of my dear client Sally is this able to help her release her own trauma from experiencing that profound vivid dream which was an insight into a parallel life yes. <sighs> so really sick. Well, I'm glad. How many other parallel lives does she have, or does she just have that other one? Hmm. Let me just see that one. What will happen when the shift happens? Uh, where will that other, where will that woman in Afghanistan go? We see her going back to source. Okay. We will send her much love and acknowledgement for her choices and life experience. So thank you, subconscious. Um out of curiosity, subconscious, when I was trying to feel into a significant lifetime that Sally may have experienced, um, the event of September 11 popped into my mind, and I'm curious to understand what is the significance between that event in America and Sally? Did she have a, any... Are the parallel lives, or what can you tell me, if anything, about that event in Sally? September. Mm. With the Twin Tower attacks. Mm -hmm. We're seeing we're seeing the plane go through and right before it goes through the building, many spirits lift up. So no one feels anything. They just pop right out. There's their ghosts. Like they're just pop right out. Spirits. Hmm. Something with it's like Sally helps spirits cross over. Mm -hmm. ghosts that are not like they're so confused because they got thrown out of their body and usually you are able to turn around and see your body and be like understanding of what happened but sometimes when you're pushed out and you don't see your body and the event is very quick and it's like they get stuck and confused and they were finding people there's many finding people who could help them cross over I feel like she helped with that I feel like she helped with that. We're also seeing a man in a business suit. Um, jumping out the building. He's jumping out because it's so hot. 
He's burning. He needs to get out. This is confusing, Sally. She's experienced a dream. She was a businessman, 1930s, two men grabbed him with his briefcase. He had money, he owed them something. They brought him up to a tall, tall building. Looks like a downtown area. They pushed him off. Sally remembers this, she remembers. He pushed off, going down, far down looking up at the men as he fell and turning around to see the pavement, waiting to almost, almost seeing the pavement, it was less scary than seeing the sky, wanting to see it as Sally went down, as the man went down, and black and white, didn't feel the, uh, didn't feel it. She popped awake. You get the sense. This man is related to the man in the tower. Parallel, parallel life of a man in the 1930s, but then he's connected to the man that jumped out of the tower. And the significance of him uh, choosing to jump out of the tower in that lifetime. Um, what was the significance of that exit point? It's like he didn't want to get pushed out. It almost like What's the word? We get a feeling that it's, he didn't want to be pushed out. He wanted to decide on his own. I feel like he's almost reenacting the same situation, but this time it's not, he, uh, he's reenacting the same situation. He, I, I can't ex, I can't ex, um, he's reenacting it and he wants to do it his way this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we don't get it, we don't, Sally's confused. Okay, I can understand that he would want to take control and be in charge of his exit point. And That's the sense. That's, yes, that's what it, it's like he was so, can't even say the word, we get the feeling, but it caused him so much. Oh, yeah, I don't even know how to say this. He wanted to redo it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so that was a parallel, another parallel lifetime, but obviously he, he departed um, on that event. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is confusing, Sally. 
the parallel live aspect or something else? She uh, was trying to block the parallel lives. We feel it because she was dreaming them and they were upsetting her. Is it helping her to be able to understand that while it is upsetting, she now can see the bigger perspective of it and be able to fully release it? Yes, it's so, it's so, so vivid. And now there's another one. There's another one now. Another, another life coming up. She's had a, a, another life where she was in the jungle. And she was, get a sense it was South America. And she was a native running, it's another lifetime of running away from someone. Man, white man, cornered her on the bridge in the jungle. And pushed him, he was falling off the bridge, grabbed onto the edges, holding on. And the man comes up and starts stepping on his fingers and rubbing them hard against his Boots until he lets go. And again, falling, falling, turning around to face the ground, turns black and white. She's, Sally is getting confused. <laughs> Get still. She doesn't understand this. Mm, yeah. And she knows she's just experiencing the session today. And when she listens back to it, it will make so much more sense. <laughs> yes, it's okay. <laughs> Okay. She's just confused, but she's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and what can she overcome and learn from that lifetime in South America on the bridge? <sighs> she felt um, much hurt from that man of him wanting to see him die. And just to know that everyone plays their role in these earth experiences. Some are going to be, I guess you could say, the ones who want to choose the more um, oh, you don't want to say that word. Some choose to do certain things that will affect others negatively in certain lifetimes. And then some others will do things positively and it does switch around. So it's just a matter of not, not holding any sort of attachment towards anyone because everyone's just playing their role. Yes, I understand. Out of curiosity, does she know that man in this lifetime, um, the one that stood on the fingers to help the exit point? <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> She's seeing her current partner. Awkward. Okay. <laughs> mm. And um, in that lifetime, what did they want to learn from each other? It was for her to not hold attachment towards someone playing a role of being the person to harm and to release it. She did not in that lifetime, we feel she did not. She was hurt, mm -hmm. very hurt. And his role was to Oh, we're trying to feel through. We're seeing the face. We're trying to feel the, what it purpose was for him. Mm. Feel empowered and in control of someone's existence. Hmm. And remind me what they want to learn from each other this lifetime. How to love each other. Love, um, feel, feel their true love for each other. And because they have accomplished it already, that's why they're detaching from each other now. Because they've completed their cycle and mission together. Yes. They've been detaching for a while. Yes. Okay. I thank you so much, subconscious. Um, in terms of her actual dreams she's having now, she feels that she's very busy talking to many people and she's sort of get a sense that she is purging trauma. Is there anything else you would like her to know about those dreams? She's talking to people outside, just big groups of people, chatting with them like they're all her friends. And there's no ill at ease. It's all very calming and very positive energy around it. Somehow she is not telling them things, but she's being in their presence, she is uh, sending blocks of information to their mind. It's, we just see blocks of information. Um, they're representing it as like yellow and it's like, looks like a square. They're just showing us that as a, a representation, but it's like there's knowledge in there and it's being inserted subconsciously in their dreams. There's many people, but she's just talking to them like friends and they're all just enjoying each other's energy in the dream. Lovely, okay. Oh, that is cute. Okay, thank you. Um, <sighs> is there anything else more you want her to know about her dreams? You know, she's curious. Mm -hmm. She's releasing really uh, trauma, a feeling. Mm, like emotionally neglected by many when she was younger. And it's kind of one of those, it's like it was pushed down and ignored with the inner child and the inner child has been healed, but there's random situations that were still embedded in there. And all those little random situations that 
don't seem like much to people still needs to get released and we're doing that now all of it and that's why she's feeling more empowered and detached and grateful all at the same time fantastic could you say that for many having to overcome and experience the holiday um season the festive season was a great opportunity for many people to get triggered and to overcome and learn and heal from all of the other uh, potentially outstanding inner child work that they haven't been able to address or release prior. Yes, very much so. That is true. There is much that gets released with many people who gather together. <laughs> that not everyone usually spends time with. So it's quite a helpful situation, actually. <laughs> Fantastic. Good to know. And is there any other final information you would like her to know um, or for us to know um, as we are approaching the end of this current year? You would say it's okay to start detaching now from things emotionally. It's you're still a good person. You can still love others. You can still be grateful. But it helps to also detach your emotions from you want to say as much as possible as many as possible emotions emotions can be they can be a hindrance and we want you to be in your power, your individual power, without feeling like you have attachments to people, loved ones, things, places, objects. I want you to start detaching, cutting those cords, Standing in your power, you can still love, you can still be a good person, but detaching is going to be um, a good idea. Thank you so much. Out of curiosity, um, the last time Sally and myself had a public session, uh, we were asking, I was asking about the purpose of people being imprinted with the Roman life. And we heard on the feedback, and I also heard during the session, a very pronounced different sound. Are we able to know what that sound was, please? can hear it. Sally is trying to stop us from saying it. Why is she trying to stop it from saying it? Stop. Thinks they're gonna say it wrong. Wrong. It's almost like 
<laughs> we're, like, we're looking at Sally. It's okay. It's a name, a name. Is it the name of the Roman? The Roman that did not have a name. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he was, as we've done the, re our, well, as I've done research on this information after channeling it, we discovered that he doesn't have an official not name. They just named him something after they made him a saint, um, which we thought was very intriguing. But did he come in to her session and say his official name? That's the name. Yes. What was the significance of him wanting to share his real name with us? He wanted you to know who he was. He wanted the viewers who are experiencing the dreams to hear it. He wanted them to, it's almost like he's giving us the impression that they tried to ignore it. <laughs> and he was wanting to come out in the session. Locally, let them know who he is, and he does. He does. Given the significance of his life experiences, and he can understand the importance of having that weight on his shoulders. Uh, he grew from that profound experience where he found not only his faith, but his strength to stand up to truth. And is this what he is wanting those who are getting those imprints of that life? He wants them to not be afraid of what others' reactions would be if they do stand up. He wants them to not feel afraid of going against the peer pressure. And in Know the truth. Those who are getting these dreams with him know they're not vocalizing it. Okay. Well, we send him love and appreciation for his choices in his lifetime where he could stand up. Um, and we appreciate him coming to help us in our session. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Mm, wonderful. <sighs> it was extraordinary to learn more about him after our sessions. <laughs> <laughs> Very thankful. Yes, he appreciates it. Extraordinary. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, 
subconscious, is there any other information you would like Sally to know privately? There's many things going on in her head. <laughs> she is. <laughs> She's very, very grateful. Very grateful for these sessions. We are happy for her. She was in much confusion for a very long time and no one to turn to. She feels much empowered now. And we just want her to know we're always there next to her. And she did ask about Archangel Michael, wanting to know about him and why he laid over her last night. And it was because they, they're so connected and she's, she loves them. She tells them all the time. And he laid over her to where she felt his face on her face. Arms became his arms. Body became his body. Because he just wants to be close to her and let her know he's always there. That's very sweet. <laughs> really lovely and um, nice that she can understand it more now. I'm sure she probably had a hunch, but it's good to get clarification in these sessions. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And I wanted to ask Archangel Michael um, and the Turian Collective about the planes in September 11. Was there true planes that actually hit the buildings? Because we keep getting told different things. Bombs went off and planes hit both. Bombs went off and planes hit both. Both. From your meta, from the metaphysical perspective, um, why was this event allowed? What were you hoping it would cause, um, and have reactions? And what was the outcome you were hoping? <sighs> the hope was for humanity to be shocked into devastation of how so many lives could be lost at such a at such a um, such so many lives lost so oh, we don't want to say that word. We're looking for other words. Um, in so many different sad ways that we wanted the ripple effect to cause 
humans to look at each other as brothers and sisters, loving each other, holding each other. It did do that. It, it did do that. But it didn't have the same reaction we were hoping for because they targeted, they, they targeted the people who feel like the ones who are considered terrorists are not terrorists. We feel like something was planned and we feel like, wow, we see CIA, we see these men that were blamed were not They were connected to the government. What? You see George Bush, George Bush Jr. Knows. Mm. We get the sense the men were told to do this. Like it was like a, a ruse to infiltrate another country. Oil. Oh. Hmm. The regular, okay. Regular population, if left alone, there would have been great results. However, there's many power, negative agenda. We get reptilian agenda control. Uh, purposefully done, purposefully done. Infiltrate, gain access to gain access to resources, control other countries. There was bombs in the building. The planes did hit too. We knew the planes went out. The planes wouldn't collapse the building. We knew this. Bombs were put in. Thank you so much. All very interesting and purposeful. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. Mm. I guess from your perspective, subconscious, you probably had hoped that many people would have woken up to the other agendas that unfolded on that day. They, we were hoping, we were hoping they would be woken, yes. But it was like they were clouded by sadness and felt them, because of them blaming and pinning it on an, another group of people from a different country, it was almost like they were telling, we feel the media, we see newscasters saying victims, victims, those are the bad ones. And it just created a hostile, 
little style turn of not trusting each other. Media was really part of that agenda. I'm feeling like the laser event, for example, was going to trigger a lot of many people back into that blame and fear and anger and vulnerability and all of those lower emotions. Is that correct? We feel like that is correct. They're going to want to, depending on their location, they're going to think it might be more an attack from another country. It could be from an earthquake, too, with the fires. And some quietly think it's aliens. They don't want to necessarily voice that, but they do talk about it. And we just feel like it depends on where they're at geographically. If that makes sense. Um, how would they feel more closer to the event versus further away? What the, What is the difference that they would feel? Because they're going to be there with all the fires and it's like a deep line. Uh, earthquakes happening. Many will think it's the closer they are the more they think it's almost like I want to say the earth earth um, it's like crack lion like they don't know what it is but they they're so close, it's like they think it's earth breaking us. It's so confusing to them. I think they're in shock. Shock. It's like the ones who are closer to it. Are in, shock, are in so much shock that they just look at it directly and assume. It's part of earthquakes. And we don't know if this is a protective measure on their parts with their ego, but we get a sense that the closer someone is to it, the more they're going to try and block other, I, other, it's like they're trying to, we don't get this, we don't understand. We just see them looking at the ground and there's like a blank thought process. It's, it's like shock if we get a feeling. Cracking. It's like they think, oh, what? <laughs> We don't know, it's... Something... The Earth... It's like they first assume something natural happens because they can't process it. They're in so much shock. And then, I don't know how much time passes, but we start to wake up from it. 
And I want to say in the days too, seeing the days of others talking about it. Others' opinions. It's so confusing. You see people pointing at the sky. and arguing with each other. Thank you. Yeah, I guess that's what we're all sort of assuming and concerned about is how um, the fear and the blame and all those lower emotions are just going to be very, very, very strong and prevalent. Um, on the planet after the laser event and all the other things that need to happen beforehand. Yes, it's it was confusing because everyone's going to have their own thought. Each individual person is going to have their own initial emotional reaction and it's going to be different and it cannot be really blanketed as such because each person has their own way of coping and that could be completely wiping away and erasing what they're seeing. I understand, thank you so much. And mm -hmm. out of quick curiosity, when I was also wondering about uh, what other lifetimes Sally had experienced, um, I got a sense of a time when Buddha was alive. Um, did she have a lifetime around that man? Drawn to his teachings with Buddhism, resonated with it. It's a big one for her. We are showing her him. We are trying to see what she's involved in with his life. She's a woman. Oh, he's sitting. Meditating. Always meditating and she comes dark hair, bowl, holding a bowl, walking over. Oh, what is the bowl? Like a shallow little cup, like a bowl cup, water in it. She puts it down and sits next to him. And knows he's been there for a while. So she Drinks it up to him. And he drinks from it. And she places it back down. Gets comfortable. And starts meditating next to him. If 
feel like there's more people around. Like almost like they're like a group of people that practice beliefs, their beliefs together. And they're like family, they care about each other. Were they family or just uh, acquaintances? Let's see. Hmm. You get a sense that they're like cousins. <laughs> like family, but not brother and sister. Um, cousins. Because there's a familiar, familiar, feeling where it's not just a stranger. Connected to each other and just at ease with each other like you would be with those who are very close to you. We just see them meditating. Nice. And why was that a big life for her, as you said? <sighs> for Sally to be aware of this, she was trying to push it away because She looks at certain um, certain people who played roles as a really big and life changing, and she has so much resonance with Buddhist teachings. And she was not aware why. She's seen this woman. This woman is very happy and at peace. And we feel like this is a life changing, a life changing role to play as it taught her what it feels like to be at one with oneself, at peace with others. not to be not to be controlled by the environment of earth but to have more knowing we just feel like very grounded Very grounded, not distracted at all by anything. Sounds beautiful. It's very calming. It's quite 
lovely. And they do it for hours, days. It's like that's their reality. Is there anything else you want her to know about that lifetime? Hmm. It was one of the most positive lifetimes. She, you could say easier, <laughs> easier easier mentally, emotionally, physically. It was a respite for her to experience. She needed to have, because of the other lifetimes, this was a healing lifetime. Could it be said that because she profoundly became enlightened in that lifetime, uh, she was capable of having these incredibly challenging ones ahead uh, for her to grow from since she already mastered uh, enlightenment? We're trying to look back in time before that life. She was on earth, guides, deities before that one. She did ask after feeling one with all the source, she did ask for the difficult lifetimes she was capable of achieving. She wanted to experience it, gain the knowledge, and allow herself to experience it so others and another others wouldn't have to do it. And she was happy to do it, wanted to do it. And that lifetime gave her the inner courage, inner peace, inner knowing all is truly well. Beautiful. But was that her first physical lifetime where she achieved a very high level of awakening. You see Atlantis. She achieved much there as well with awakening. It was different though, different feeling energetically. Um, she was able to harness powers. <sighs> We're not being shown at the moment. Mm -hmm. Others. Extraordinary. I thank you so much. Um, is there any final messages? Mm. Mm, this message is for you. Because we love you so much. And you do so much work. It's most helpful to this planet and future events. 
and you're definitely the perfect person to be carrying out this role. We couldn't be happier for what you have done, what you'll continue to do. We thank you so much for the time and the effort you have put into this. Well, thank you for being so kind. I certainly am not perfect at this by any stretch of the imagination, but I do try. Um, did you want me to do more mentoring for practitioners? Um, it has been requested, and I'm just wondering if this is what you're wanting me to do. They see you as a teacher. You are perfect for that. You do speak honestly and have great knowledge, much to be shared. You have free will. Of course, we love that. We love that you do. We would be grateful to you to spread more of that knowledge with those who need it because they are foundering. They don't know what to do with the work. They have been prepared for information and so they're not receiving it or they're purposefully blocking it we feel like you're the key to help with that we want you to relax we don't want you to do too much though do what you feel called to do we will guide you if you want us to. Thank you. Yep. Um, no risk of me running. <laughs> <sighs> okay, well, thank you so much. Um, how is Sally's body going? Doing well. She is okay with more questions if you have any. No, I'm. I'm questioned out um mm -hmm. I, I respect all the information you've provided for us it's incredibly intriguing and i i i love all of the insight and wisdom that you so lovingly share with us so my kindest regards to all of the collectives um as we are approaching incredible times yes thank you thank you Joanne. you're welcome okay